So the L322 Range Rover might just be one of the best all-round cars of all time. Add the luxury and a, uh, a couple of Spaniels <laughs> and it's the perfect all-round car. I'm Ed and this is Backroad Hero. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, if I wasn't already in love with this car, um, I would be. Uh, we just returned back from a lovely week in uh, North Devon. Uh, four dogs, three adults, and all the luggage, and it performed absolutely flawlessly. Um, we got over 30 miles to the gallon out of the Beastie. Um, of course, the eight-speed box making all the difference there. But I'm just going to share a few things, um, what actually highlighted it, and why it is probably um, one of the best luxury cars, bar none, out there. So let's get right in there, and I'll show you absolutely why. Let's get it, uh, let's get it opened up. We'll spin it around. It is... Uh, probably one of the most practical cars I have uh, I've ever ever owned. I had one of these way back in about 2004 when they came out with the TD6 but the TD V8 with the 8 speed box uh, makes all the difference that's the 4.4 TD V8. Anyway I'll flip it around and you will see okay we've still got some of the remnants in here but we got four dogs we got all the cages we got all the bedding we got all the uh, uh, the <laughs> everything 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 um, and we filled it uh, pretty much to the roof uh, we only had three adults not four so that made it possible really um, and we filled the uh, the back of the car absolutely to the brim um, obviously we got the, the the third occupant here uh, Russell my brother-in-law came along um, and there you go filled up the back seat to the roof and that was all the luggage um, but better than luggage space is the uh, the driving position I think if you don't know if you don't know with these things um, Obviously, first of all, you're sitting a little bit higher up. For all of those that are thinking about coming from a, a regular a sedan or saloon, it makes a huge difference driving around the country lanes. Now, North Devon, right down in the bottom end of uh, England, down the southwest, uh, the roads aren't known for their width. <laughs> It's a big old car, um, and uh, actually we got the, the wing mirror clipped, 125 quid later on eBay, and that's all uh, resolved. Anyway, um, I'll flip it around. I'll show the camera at eye height, and I will show you uh, that despite having the, uh, the massive bonnet on this car, it's all road. So that's exactly my eye position. I come over uh, the steering wheel, and look at that the bonnet completely disappears. It's obviously, it's the, uh, it's, it's the angle. It's a, it's a strange thing. I thought looking at the outside of the car um, that uh, you wouldn't uh, get the visibility that you do. So add the commanding um, height and the viewpoint and the fact that you're looking down at all the little people. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and it's, it's wonderful. You can see over hedges um, to, uh, to overtake or see oncoming cars in the daytime. Um, the glass house, as they call it on these things, um, I haven't seen as much glass in a car uh, since a, uh, a 23 window Samba. Uh, if you don't know what that is, go and Google it. Um, if you know straight off the cuff, um, do you fancy going for a beer sometime? <laughs> so I'm a huge V-Dub fan, I have to say. Um, always have been, always will be. Um, if I had a choice of a Carmen Ghia um, or a 911, I'd go, uh, I'll go Carmen Ghia all day, every day. Anyway, we had a beautiful one, a South African import. Um, a guy pestered me for about six months. Um, Hi Mark, um, he pestered me for about six months to buy the thing after I'd restored it and uh, it's subsequently been sold on so you know what that was a cracking car ruby red uh, yeah it's gone it's done it's away anyway so we got the space we got the commanding driving position um, we've got the the view um, the fact uh, the fact that the the windscreen, it's so damn tall, this thing. Um, okay, yes, I'm a short arse, don't laugh. Um, and it was all designed so Her Royal Highness uh, could wear um, her hat to Ladies' Day, etc., etc. So that's why. Uh, and also at the back, let me show you a little, uh, little design feature. Look at that. 
stadium seating. Stadium seating. That means that the, uh, the rear seats are higher than the front. Looks like it's about a good seven or eight inches. That all means that the rear seat passengers um, can have a, a commanding vision um, of the surroundings. So you know what, to travel around and look at things and look at the sights, it's a fantastic, fantastic thing. Uh, uh, these are just random facts that we've, we've, uh, we've noticed along the way. Uh, let me see, next. So, want to know what else is special about this thing? Open this. Put down the tailgate. You can sit there um, under cover because the roof, um, the roof, because the door um, opens above. And there you go, you've got someone to sit, swing your legs, um, and eat your sandwich. Put this down, leave the tailgate open, and I'll show you what you can do. <laughs> you see, if you're a short arse like me and are at the races, and want to have a bit more elevation. There you go. What more? What more do you possibly need? Um, this makes it all worthwhile. I feel like an absolute giant up here. Pair of binoculars at the GGs or whatever, um, and you've got your perfect viewpoint. <sighs> Just amazing. Thank you, um, thank you Range Rover for thinking about these things. Why do I love it? Oh yes, it does 30 miles to the gallon. Now that's not driving like uh, you're driving Miss Daisy. That's, uh, that's hoofing along um, on the motorways when we could. Um, you know, three up, all luggage and four dogs. And it's still averaged over 30 miles to the gallon. You know, that's fantastic. Um, it's now my kind of go-to car to commute, um, believe it or not. On this one, to get 30 plus out of a big tank uh, of, uh, you know, two and a half tons of thereabouts, um, it's, a, it's a great thing. So you know what, it doesn't prevent me using it on a, a daily basis. So why else do I love it? Oh yeah. So why else do I love this? Oh yes, it's uh, sheer value for money. People don't know if you bought one of these new, they were 70 grand. People don't know who you are, what you are, um, or, or anything else. Um, it can be, uh, you know, regular people driving one of these, a nice one, keep it clean. Nobody knows. Um, and Her Majesty still has uh, hers. Jeremy Clarkson still has his, albeit a 3.6 Westminster. Um, and he says that's all the car you'll ever need. I tend to believe him. It'll tow um, everything but the Titanic. Um, it's, uh, it's a great bit. Detachable tow bars. There you go. There's another. There's another like. Let's go and have a look at that. So at the back end of things, nice and clean appearance. Look at that. Neat, 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 neat. And uh, there it is. There's the little detachable tow bar, um, and it hides away. Uh, what's even better that uh, Land Rover have thought about these things. Okay, they've even thought about where they're going to hide it. Um, a little hidey hole is uh, is in there on the right side. Um, grab the tab. <sighs> dun, dun, dun. Um, and there it is, all hidden away under the floor. A, uh, a detachable and uh, locking tow bar. So uh, Land Rover have thought about these things. Um, when you put your tow bar on and, uh, and you've got your little cap, um, just about to hook up your trailer. Um, oh, what, what, do you, what do you do with your, what do you do with your cap? Hey, let me show you. Look, 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 perfectly. Designed for all of those that wondered uh, what on earth this little strange space was in the middle. That's it, there you go. You know where it is, it's not gonna rattle around. Might be a bit greasy, but, uh, but that's kind of it. You know what, fantastic design and a bit of forethought. So this car, let's talk about value for money. This car when it was new, it's a, a base spec, it's a Vogue, it's got everything you know, really you'd ever need. If truth be told, the one I would go for if I was really, really uh, being uh, fussy about it. We like the color on this one, or Robin did. He liked the contrasting interior. If you've seen the Maserati 3200 GT that he had, um, it's exactly the same kind of color combination, the dark blue with the, with the cream uh, interior. 
Anyway, so he fell in love with the colour and pretty much just bought, bought it on site. And then if you've been following the series, you'll see the troubles we had, not necessarily with the car, more with the dealer um, and all of that. Anyway, um, we paid 16 grand for this, probably at right at top end, and that's kind of COVID prices, uh, pandemic prices, as it were. Um, the uh, you can pick up a really, really nice one of these, the 4.4 TDV8, for, from about, uh, I'd say, about 11 grand onwards. If I really had the choice, I'd go for the Vogue SE spec. Um, that added kind of radar cruise control, and it added cooled seats as well as the heated ones. Um, if you're wondering whether your car has cooled seats or not, if you've got an extra set of knobs um, down here, the car has got the cooled seat. If your car has got the rotary knob for uh, the uh, gearbox, then it's got the eight speed box. Just really, really makes this car. It's over 300 horsepower. It doesn't rev very high, but with eight speeds, you're just riding a wall of torque. All that torque's available from just 1500 RPMs. The difference between the 3.6 TDV8 and the 4.4 TDV8s, um, apart from extra cubes um, and extra cc's, is this fa simple fact that the uh, the layout of the turbochargers are, are different. Uh, in the uh, 3.6, uh, they run one turbocharger per bank, so they're kind of like a parallel system. Um, but in the 4.4, uh, it's a sequential turbo. So you've got one small one for the low end, you've got one bigger one for the uh, for the top end, and between them both, uh, they, they work absolutely fantastically. So there you go, more reasons for the 4.4. So that's it, really just a, a very, very quick a video. I'll uh, keep it short and sharp. Um, the more we drive this car, um, the more we absolutely love it. Life is all about risk and reward. Ask any entrepreneur. If you're willing to take the risk in one of these things, yes, the repair bills can be expensive, but find a good independent like we have done uh, in, uh, in Bister here. Uh, Bister Land Rover. Uh, there is a following out there, full fat Range Rovers, if anybody's looking to join a forum. Um, there's everything in there. There are people willing to help. So any drawbacks you say? Um, yes, of course. Um, the car's a little bit wider uh, than normal. Um, I clipped a wing mirror. Um, hands up. Uh, all my fault, pretty much. Yeah, that and the other guy coming the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Narrow roads, no central uh, line, and just at a, a pinch point, um, we didn't give each other enough room, and uh, I was pressing on a bit because we were late, so there you go. Anyway, um, shit happens. So, uh, let me see, infotainment. Uh, infotainment is, uh, is, is crap um, for the L322, especially in this era. Why you only got hands-free uh, for the, uh, the car phone? Uh, and not for streaming audio, uh, I don't know. Maybe it just wasn't invented back then, but I'm sure it was. I mean, I had uh, cars even older than that uh, that are streaming Bluetooth, Bluetooth connections. So um, if you haven't seen the videos, there's one about the Inveri, uh, same as a Bovi, I believe it or not, plugs into the iPod. That'll sort out your Bluetooth streaming. And then um, uh, we put in uh, the Apple CarPlay unit. There's the Apple CarPlay unit firing up. Um, for uh, that, so that made the difference and made the navigation all uh, workable. So, some streaming, uh, streaming tunes, and uh, some proper navigation on a little seven-inch screen. If you're interested in one of those, uh, backroadhero.com. Uh, go into the shop. Uh, we've got the last few left for the uh, for UK. So, so, so. Well, that's it really for now. Um, yeah, it's you know what, more positives than negatives. I love this car. I have to say, I absolutely love it. Uh, the value for money, uh, the luxury, uh, the way it makes you feel. I, I harp on about this and all of uh, all of the. There's no point in owning a car unless it makes you feel special. And for the value on this thing, um, for 15 grand, uh, you will find an absolutely exceptional car. It might have its issues. Find one that's been well maintained, a good service history, uh, do your checks and all the rest of it. Um, I won't mention any um, car check uh, people because I, I don't have enough views, apparently. I applied um, to um, and uh, they said, no, sorry, Ed, uh, develop your channel a bit more uh, to see whether you're getting an average of uh, 10 to 15,000 views a video. That's what they're asking for. For all of you wanting to know about these things, you'll see a lot of 
I would have liked them to kind of assist with this, but you know what, screw them. Um, I'll, I'll just mention them and uh, and that'll be it. So hopefully they'll get back to me. And I said, well, well, if you look at my uh, video, some of them are 45,000 and, uh, and plus, but uh, hey, you know what, that's just YouTube for you. You know, if you're if you're a, a minnow in, uh, in the big sea, nobody actually gives a rat's ass. But uh, okay, that's a negative. Uh, Let's not finish on a negative. Nobody wants to do that. This is a fantastic car. There are a few people I know are sitting on the fence as to going to buy one of these things or not. You know what? Go and test drive one and then make a decision. Take your wife along. Um, let her see how easy it is to drive and more importantly, the commanding position. You know this car will do everything. It will go everywhere and every other uh, big uh, four-wheel drive or SUV is merely a pretender. I'll say that everyone is comparing themselves to the Range Rover. And even in this guise, with this engine and this gearbox, it was uh, taken all the way through the L405s, uh, the later version. So what you've got here is a lovely sweet spot. You've got the modern engine and gearbox in that classic um, style of uh, Range Rover. And you know what? It's just perfect. Till the next time, all the best now. Bye-bye.